So hematists, you know, we, we understand once we come out the other end of this, how the world has actually designed the system. You know, because we're all slaves to it. They want us to be a slave, you know. If we're not a good slave, then oh, trouble starts hitting. So this is a, a real one. As I said, this is a heartfelt one to all other hypnotists because, you know, I, I understand you and I've been there. So this is what I want to explain about hypnosis. Now, for those that have done courses in hypnotherapy, you would have heard about mesmer because we actually get got trained a lot on mesmer and the mesmer techniques and mesmerism. Actually, most of our written um, exam was on mesmer um, because really without mesmer, hypnotism would never have really come in. Um, he was the man that really, I mean, mesmerism, um, you know, transferred then into hypnosis and mesmerism is still used today and mesmerism is still used today. What have you done? Because I know with women as well, there's this lack of taking responsibility that we seem to have inbuilt with us. And you can see it from the Garden of Eden with Eve. Uh, um, serpent made me do it. <laughs> you know, we've got this thing of, of we, it's really hard for us to take responsibility. And you can see from the Garden of Eden. Greetings to you my dear friends and welcome to this video. How are you all doing? Right. Are you mesmerised by this lady? She's charming isn't she? She's polite. She's well spoken. She's charismatic. But my dear friends, this video is a warning video about this lady, right? Right. <laughs> This lady claims to be an ex-hypnotist, right? She's claiming that she's a former hypnotist, right? Um, and she's claiming that she's a Christian. Someone that claims to be a Christian, friends, and a former hypnotist, claiming to be a former hypnotist. You need to be extremely careful around that person, right? Because she obviously knows how mind control works, and she knows how to manipulate and deceive the human brain. Right? She's well trained in that, right? So, what makes you think that she cannot do that with the Holy Scriptures? 
manipulate and deceive with the holy scriptures. Right, because I'm going to give you evidence in this video that this lady is actually using hypnotic techniques in her videos to manipulate and deceive with the scriptures. She's trying to teach that Jesus is the devil and that the devil is Jesus and she's committing other blasphemies in her videos. And what she's doing is she's using scriptures combinations to do it, right? And also I'd like to say, right, is I've had a couple of comment exchanges and a couple of email exchanges with this lady in the past, right? She actually came on a few of my videos when I had comments enabled. She was actually encouraging me, right? But I went to her channel a few times and I watched a few of her videos, right? And I thought she was pretty sound in doctrine and I thought she was alright. But eventually, I started watching a lot more of her videos, right? And I started noticing a lot of sketchy things taking place, right? So, I sent her an email telling her that she was blocked from my channel because I told her that I believe she's still involved in the occult. She, of course, denied this, right? But I believe she is, right? And, um... If you're a person that follows this lady's channel, right, and you've came across this video, please listen to what I've got to say, right, and then you can decide at the end of the video whether you agree or disagree. And the Bible does say, He that answereth a matter before he heareth it, it is folly and shame unto him. So, let's get into the video. Right, see before I address this lady's teachings, right, I would just like to give a Discernment tip to Christians, right? See in your life, see every time you hear the name of the Lord Jesus Christ mentioned, or you hear a quotation of Jesus from the Bible, someone talking about Jesus from the Bible, right? Always pay close, close attention to what is said before and after, right? Pay close, close attention to the surrounding context, right? If you hear a quotation from Jesus from the Bible, right, and you start hearing the person talking about the devil and things like that after it, then alarm bells need to be ringing, right? And also, when you hear scripture quotations that talk about the devil, right, always pay close, close attention to the surrounding context of what is said before and after. If you start hearing things being spoken about of Jesus, then this is how you spot Antichrist spirits, friends. Because what I've noticed, right, is these little Antichrists are using scripture combinations to teach that Jesus is the devil and the devil is Jesus. Right? And here's an example from this channel here. See how it says here in the description, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Right, you might stop and say, Amen. Right? But what happens when you combine it with the following scripture he has here? Where it says, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And whom the God of this world have blinded the minds of them that believe not. See how when you combine both these scriptures, it now teaches that Jesus is the God of this world. When we know that Jesus is not the God of this world, Jesus is the God of the Bible, friends. The God of this world is the devil. Right? See how he's combining both these scriptures here to teach that Jesus is the devil. Right? And this lady is doing similar things, right? She's using scripture combinations to teach that Jesus is the devil and the devil is Jesus. Right, so... I just thought I would give this discernment tip, right? So let's get back to this lady. Right. See this video that she's got on her channel? Perception vs Reality. You'll never convince me that what she does here is a mistake by her. Right, because she knows the Bible pretty well, this lady, right? And let's listen to this and I'll show you what she does, right? Because you need to, you know, you're in a battle 24-7 and um, even when you don't feel it, this is what I'm, I really want to say to you. Um, even if you don't feel it, like, don't go on your feelings. Don't go on your feelings, you know. The Lord's already tested you with faith along your journey. Mm. you just got to hold on to those times when you've realised that, hang on a second, be Notice how she points upwards right on the 33rd minute, but anyways, let's address the teaching, right? I've been through this before, you know, and um, yeah, i just got to hold on. Um, I just want to read Psalm 115, starting at verse 1. 
Right, she doesn't read it. She doesn't read it now anyway. She reads it like a couple minutes later on in the video, right? She reads it, but now she doesn't. She reads Second Corinthians 4-4, four, four, which she's talking about the devil, listen. Um, just talking about those that, you know, are blinded, you know, in whom the God of this world have blinded the minds. Right, that's the devil. Second Corinthians 4-4. Four, four. And listen now how she goes on to try and correlate the God of this world, which is the devil, with the God that sends strong delusion in 2 Thessalonians 2.11. Even though we know that the God that sends strong delusion in 2 Thessalonians 2.11 is the God of the Bible. You know, and we also know that, you know, God can send strong delusion as well, because he does that in, in 2 Thessalonians 2. See? See how she's trying to correlate both their passages? The God of this world, which is the devil in 2 Corinthians 4.4. 4. She's trying to correlate it with 2 Thessalonians 2.11. When we know for sure that the God that sends strong delusion in 2 Thessalonians 2.11 is the God of the Bible. And also notice how blinded the minds here, right? How she's trying to correlate that with strong delusion. Right, and you'll never convince me that she does that by mistake, friends. She's trying to combine both these scriptures to teach that the God of this world, that the devil, is the God of the Bible. And um, let's play it one more time so you can see. Feelings, you know, the Lord's already tested you with faith along your journey. you just got to hold on to those times when you've realised that, hang on a second. Right on the 33rd minute, points upwards, but anyways. Like, I've been through this before. You know, and um, yeah, I just got to hold on. Um, I just want to read Psalm 115, starting at verse 1. Doesn't read that. Read 2 Corinthians 4.4. 4. Um, just talking about those that, you know, are blinded. You know, in whom the God of this world have blinded the minds. The devil. You know, and we also know that, you know, God can send strong delusion as well, because he does that in, in 2 Thessalonians 2. Right, that's the God of the Bible. She's clearly doing that on purpose, friends. She's got to be, because I know that this lady knows the Bible pretty well. She's obviously studied it, right? And she's trying to combine both these scriptures to teach that the God of this world, the devil, is the God of the Bible. She's combining both these passages, clearly. And, um, let's continue, right? Hi all, the thief on the cross. I love the thief on the cross. Um, right, see when someone opens up with a statement like that, friends. The thief on the cross. I love the thief on the cross. What does your brain start automatically thinking about? Your brain starts automatically thinking about the thief that put faith in the Lord Jesus Christ at Calvary, doesn't it? Do you not think she knows that? You know, she's claiming to be an ex-hypnotist. Right? But see if you actually watch the whole video. I'm not going to play the whole video, but if you actually do. She doesn't make it clear who the thief is that she's talking about, and she doesn't make it clear which thief she's talking about, right? Because remember there was two thieves at Calvary, crucified beside the Lord Jesus Christ. One mocked, friends. One mocked and ridiculed the Lord Jesus Christ, right? And um, I believe that she is actually trying to teach in this video that Jesus is the thief and Jesus is a sinner. And I'm talking about the thief that put faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. She is trying to teach that Jesus is that thief, right? And she's using hypnotic misdirection techniques to do it, right? I believe that, right? And I'll present evidence for that, right? And this is my opinion, friends, right? This is my opinion, but I'm going to give you evidence, right? So, let's continue. I know in Luke there's only a few verses, but those few verses go really deep. And there's different layers upon it as well. And um, I just want to show you the salvation of grace through faith. 
of the sinner being saved by grace through faith. And, you know, also it's so powerful. Those two thieves are really a look at the choice that you have as a lost person. You know, um, everyone will get given that choice to accept or reject Jesus Christ. And on either side of Jesus Christ is a thief, a sinner. And one chooses, you know, to humble himself and repent and put his faith in Jesus Christ. And the other one doesn't. And um, I just think it's really powerful. Right. We've played a fair part of the video now, right? And have you noticed that we still don't have any indication from her of which thief that she is talking about? Right? And also we don't have any indication from her of who the thief is. Right? And also did you notice that right after she talks about the thief that mocked, she says, and I just think this is really powerful. Right? So listen to it one more time. And one chooses, you know, to humble himself and repent and put his faith in Jesus Christ and the other one doesn't. And um, I just think it's really powerful and the other one doesn't. And um, I just think it's really powerful. Have you also noticed, friends, that she has not made it clear what she finds powerful? She's not making it clear what she finds powerful, right? And she now goes on to do that again. She says it's just powerful. And then she goes into a quotation of the thief that mocked. And I'm just starting to look now into the deeper layers of it. And I just want to compare scripture with scripture with you and just have a look at some of these. It's just, it's just powerful. Right, she says it's just powerful, right? And then now she goes into a quotation of the thief that mocked. And then she reads the rest of the scripture. Uh, I'll read through first and then we'll break it down. But Luke 23, starting at verse 39. And one of the malefactors which were hanged railed on him, saying, If thou be Christ, save thyself and us. Right, she now goes on to quote the rest of the scripture, right? And at the end of the quotation of the scripture, she talks about Jesus. She quotes Jesus, right? And then she starts talking about Peter Ruckman, right? And as you can see how far we are in the video now, friends, right? And she's not made it clear who the thief is, which thief she is talking about, and what she finds powerful, right? You know why? Because she relies upon your foolish assumptions. She relies upon your foolish assumptions, right? And at the start of the video, you're already hypnotised. Because you don't take time to analyse the opening statement, and you make foolish assumptions, right? And now I'm going to get into the part of the video. I'm going to skip the next part because, as I said, she now goes on to start talking about Peter Ruckman. Quotes the rest of the scripture. And then she starts talking about Peter Ruckman, right? And now I'm going to get into the part of the video where I've got concrete evidence that she is trying to teach that Jesus is a sinner. She's trying to teach that Jesus is the thief that put faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. She's trying to teach that Jesus is that thief. And she uses misdirection techniques to teach it. And she uses two scriptures to teach it, right? And let's get into that part of the video. self-righteous, prideful sinner and um, doesn't want to humble himself before God. You know, Jesus Christ says um, a wicked and adulterous generation seeks after a sign and none shall be given to him. It, and that says, you know, in Matthew. And, um, you know, he's saying, save thyself and others. He's being, you know, prideful. He's self-righteous. Doesn't want to humble himself. Um, I mean, this guy's going to die. He's nailed to a cross. Like, he knows he's going to die and he still can't humble himself. And there's a lot of people getting to the end of their life that are going to die in that pride. Um, but the other answering rebuked him, saying, Dost not thou fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation? Right, the scripture that she just quoted there to end with, right, she now goes on to start talking about this thief, right? And this is the thief that put faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, right? So just remember she's talking about this thief, right? you got the other sinner on the other side going, hey mate, like he's got fear of the Lord. Um, I know I had fear of the Lord when I got saved. Right, I'll just pause it here, right, so we can make it clear, right, that she's still talking about the thief, to put faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, right. She now goes on to quote a scripture from Proverbs and a scripture from the Epistles, right, but I believe that she uses these two scriptures is misdirection so that you don't notice the blasphemy that takes place after it because after she quotes these scriptures right 
She goes on to teach that the thief on the cross is Jesus and she uses two scriptures to teach it, right? She combines two scriptures to teach it, right? And I'll show you what she does, right? But pay attention, right? You've got to pay close attention. And Proverbs 9.10, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. We're also told as well in the Paul and epistles to work out our salvation in fear and trembling. Um, fear of the Lord. Yeah, fear the Lord. I mean, this, this sinner's got it. He's got fear of the Lord. He's right, so I've stopped it one more time to show you that she's clearly still talking about the thief that put faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, right? And watch now. Listen now how she goes on to combine Luke twenty three forty with John three nineteen, combines both these scriptures right to teach that Jesus is the thief, right? Because in Luke twenty three forty, the thief talks about condemnation, and in John three nineteen, Jesus talks about condemnation, right? And she quotes the thief in Luke twenty three forty, right? She goes on to say, and we know where else he talks about condemnation then goes into a quotation of Jesus, thus teaching that Jesus is the faith, thus teaching that Jesus is the faith to put faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Right? And I'll explain it to you in more detail after I play the clip. Um, and he also says, seeing thou art in the same condemnation, we know where else he talks about condemnation, which is John 3. Um, I'm just saying from 19, verse 19 to 21. And this is the condemnation that light is coming to the world, and men loved darkness rather than light. Right, you must be able to see it, friends. You must be able to see what she done. And I even believe so much that she used proverbs and the other scripture that she spoke about in the epistles as misdirection so that you don't notice what she done. She quotes the thief in Luke 23 40, right? But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Doest not thou fear God, seeing thou out in the same condemnation, right? This is a thief that put faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, and obviously this thief is talking to the other thief on the cross that mocked the Lord Jesus Christ and ridiculed the Lord Jesus Christ, right? But she goes on to say, and we know where else he talks about condemnation, and then she goes on to quote Jesus, where Jesus talks about condemnation in John three nineteen, thus teaching that Jesus is the thief, thus teaching that Jesus is the thief. And she's using all sorts of hypnotic techniques in her videos, friends, so that you don't notice the blasphemies that she's implementing, right? She's trying to teach that Jesus is the devil, the devil is Jesus, and teaching all other blasphemies in her videos, friends. And let's continue, and I'll present more evidence. And, but in fact, actually, I just want to point out, right, see where she says, and we know where else he talks about condemnation? Where she says he, in regards to Jesus, she does that in a lot of her videos, friends, where she says he, when she goes into quotations of Jesus, which makes me know that she's doing it on purpose. She's got to be doing it on purpose, because she can't be doing it by mistake all the time, right? And she must be getting out an occult book somewhere, friends. She must be getting it out an occult book, right? And let's continue. If you think about the thief on the cross, he was in a repentant state. Jesus didn't need to preach repentance to him. He was already repentant. He was on the cross saying, you know what, I deserve this. But Jesus Christ doesn't. He's innocent. He knew he was a This thief knew he was a sinner. He knew he'd done wrong. He knew that he deserved to go to hell. He was in that repentant state. And he believed Jesus was who he said he was. You know, it says he that suffers with, with him will also reign with him. So this life is not all, hey, yay, let's go and live it all up and stuff like that, no. But when it comes to the devil and stuff like that, there's a lot of stuff that the Lord's doing in the spiritual realm that you have no idea about whatsoever.
But when it comes to the devil and stuff like that, there's a lot of stuff that the Lord's doing in the spiritual realm that you have no idea about whatsoever. And sometimes it just takes a dream or something like that where you actually realize, okay, and there's stuff going on in the spiritual realm that I'm glad I don't know about, but I needed that reminder. I needed that reminder that the Lord's got me. The Lord's got me. He's um, protecting me and he's keeping me safe. But I also needed the reminder as well um, of the actual spiritual battle we are in. And um, yeah, not to take that lightly either. And, um, and it also reminded me of that malevolence, that evil. And, um, and what we've got to remember is the lost world, you know, the devil is their father. And he tells us that in John, you are the father of the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do, who is alive from the beginning and bode not in the truth. Um, And what we've got to remember is the lost world, you know, the devil is their father. And he tells us that in John, you are the father of the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do, who is alive from the beginning and bode not in the truth. Um, Right, I'm going to wrap up this video here. I could take a lot more time and take more clips out of videos, right? But I'm not going to, because I'm not going to sit here for hours taking all the clips out, right? See this video, she's got on her channel here, The Gospel, Peter Ruttman, right? This guy is doing something similar in regards to the teaching about the thief on the cross, right? I believe that this guy's teaching in this video using hypnosis using hypnotic techniques that Jesus is the thief. I'm not going to break down this whole video, right? If I ever get time, I will make a video exposing this guy's lies, right? Because this guy, Peter Ruttman, is one of the worst, one of the worst false teachers I've ever listened to in my life. And people idolise this guy, friends. It is a cult. Ruttmanism is a cult, and I believe it's a satanic cult. And see, when I say satanic cult, I mean a literal satanic cult. Hey. You guys may know, but um, over the course of, I don't know, last six months, eight months, maybe even a year, I've uploaded about 20 of Peter Ruckman's videos, and uh, I have practically all of his audio and video library. I listen to about an hour every day when I work out, and I'm a, um, I, I think that he's a modern day Apostle Paul. I, I think that he's a modern day Apostle Paul. I think that he's a modern day Apostle Paul. And um, she's trying to teach in her videos that Peter Ruttman is Jesus, right? And she's doing it through her titles on her videos and she does it through what she says in her videos as well. For example, in some of her videos she'll be talking about quotations of Jesus, right? She'll go into quotations of Jesus and then she starts talking about Peter Ruckman, right? And listen to this here. You'll never convince me that this is a mistake that happens here, right? You know, the backbone of every preacher in this country. He turned around and said he's a good man, nothing wrong, get off his back. And then he turned to Jesus. And turned to Jesus, he said, Lord. Lord? And don't tell me his name's just going to appear on screen now. Oh, it did! It did appear on screen, Dr. Peter S. Rockman, right after he says, Lord. Yeah, sure. Right, um... I'll show you more, right? The titles. She's definitely put teaching in her videos that Peter Rockman is Jesus. I can see right through what she's doing. Where's that one? Call upon the name of the Lord. They're like they're the second coming of Jesus Christ, Peter Ruttman. Peter Ruttman's dead, by the way. Well, I know most people know that, but in case you don't know. Um, 
Where is that other one? The key to salvation, Peter Rotman. Right, Peter Rotman isn't salvation, right? Call upon the name of the Lord, Peter Rotman. Peter Rotman is not the Lord, right? And, um, she's definitely teaching in her videos that Peter Rotman is Jesus. I can see right through what she's doing. And, um, be wary around this guy, by the way. This guy. Known by Brian Denlager, because she's obviously connected to this guy. And I believe it's quite possibly a Catholic network. And, um, she's mocking you in her videos. She's mocking you. Well, even look here at this testimony video here. Third party. See the why there? Do you think that's a mistake by her? Third party testimony, if it's to Jesus Christ. I don't believe it's a mistake. That video there's just parroted from a well-known occultic channel on YouTube called Round Saturn's Eye. I know that she says in the description in this video she doesn't recommend his teachings, but still alarm bells there, right? Where is that? God is not the author of confusion. She's got a video on her channel called God is not the author of confusion. Yeah, that. But that's full of confusion, that video, friends. Full of confusion. And I think she's doing it on purpose. Eh. Uh, that, Peter Rutman lies in that video. Peter Rutman tries to say that the word of God itself is deceptive. That's a lie. Eh. Uh, the word, people handle the word of God deceitfully. Right, but the word of God in itself is not deceit deceitful, right? God might allow people to be deceived as an act of judgment, but God doesn't actually do the deceiving. He allows lying spirits to deceive people if he brings judgment upon these people. If you understand, read the Old Testament, right? God allows people to be deceived through lying spirits, but God is not the one that does the deceiving, right? And this guy's trying to say that the word of God is deceitful in this video. It's a lie, man. Um, that could be a form of mockery if you're a Roman Catholic, watch this, because do you know think she knows that her subscribers are going to watch that? What you try to say, if I click on this video, I'm a Catholic. I'm just saying, right, I'm just showing you things that look like forms of mockery, right? And, um, see this video here that she's got on her channel, right, Satan's master plan, on using hypnosis to control the minds of the people. Right, she says in the comments section, right, she says, I am not recommending Roger, don't know how to pronounce this guy's second name, but by any means I wouldn't go to his videos for teachings or anything like that, but what he says in this clip is spot on, but what he says in this clip is spot on, right, I don't know if she found this clip on YouTube, this video, right, and then just re-uploaded it to her channel, or she edited the original video, I don't know, right, but listen to what this guy says, right, listen to what this guy says. Satan and all his spirit counselors held a great general council, with one purpose in mind, it was to prepare- Right, I wouldn't be surprised if she's one of the spiritual counselors, friends, right, but listen to what this guy says. For the great industrial age that was soon to break upon the world. And uh, Lucifer also foresaw another age that was... Really? He foresaw another age? Really? ...to follow that, where tremendous scientific discoveries would be made by people, and we would enter a, a unique age that would change the way that everybody lives. It would all... Well, even born-again Christians change the way they live? Yeah? ...also serve to usher in the end times, and the close of the great controversy between the forces of good and evil. And the priest said that, that Lucifer had been studying the Bible. And he found in, the, in Daniel 12, 4, where we are told about the time of the end, many shall run to and fro, knowledge shall be in, increased. Mm -hmm. He understood it to be that we're getting to that point. And he had, with all the spirit counselors, to change their modes of operation. Right, I rebuke this garbage in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, right? See anything that are satanic priest, luciferian or an occultist has to, says, has to say about the plans of Satan, it would be utter folly on your part as a Christian to listen to what they've got to say, right? Because the Bible says that the devil is the father of all lies, right? So if you want to understand anything about who Satan is, guess where you go? You go to the Bible and you see, you see what God says about Satan, friends. 
You don't listen to what occultists and Luciferians are telling you about the plans of Satan. I wouldn't trust a word that comes out of their mouths. Right? And even in this part of the video saying Satan has been studying the Bible, you've now got Satan teaching you the Bible, friends. Utter folly. And major alarm bells about that comment, friends. But what he says in this clip is spot on. Right, my friends, they're teaching that they're gods, right? And they're teaching that they own us. And even subliminally in their videos, they'll teach that you are lost, right? And they're mocking you, right? So, as I said before, I could make a much longer video about this lady, but I'm not going to sit for hours taking all the clips out. And if you agree with this video, share it and warn others, right? Um, I don't usually ask people to share my videos, man, but warn others because I could see how this lady would be able to deceive a lot of people. And once you become emotionally attached to her, you could end up in bondage. That's what they want, friends. They want you to become emotionally attached. And then they can control you. Right? And she could be casting spells on you, man. She could be casting spells, so... Warn others to avoid this channel. And also this guy, this guy Brian Denlinger, right? Warning about this man. He's obviously connected to her, right? If I ever get time, I'm going to study his videos in depth, right? I think there's some sketchy things taking place on this guy's channel as well, right? And I really do believe it could be a Catholic network, French. A Luciferian Catholic network that's in place. And thank you for watching this video. God bless.